Good night, everyone. We welcome to our Wednesday night Bible studies. We do apologize for the late start due to some technical difficulties. I am going to hand right over to Bishop Neville Owens. Bishop, you can go ahead. Thank you, beloved, and welcome once again to another Wednesday night in our Bible study series. We have a very action-packed, jam-filled time of study. Get your pens and papers. Do not leave your minds at the door or at the gate. Let us pray, if you will, as we welcome one and all to yet another night. All our love and faith family at home and abroad, we welcome you to the various uh, posts. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We commit this night to you, and we ask that you would breathe upon us the very breath of life. We commit to you ourselves, our minds, and we engage our minds and hearts in a time of study, study of your word. So bless us, Holy Spirit and inspire us now we pray and we give you thanks, amen. So on all the platforms, we welcome you once again, Bible study time. Last week we dealt with the bride of Christ and we finished the Hosea Goma portion of that study tonight. And anytime the Lord shifts us like this, it is very important. We want to focus again on the subject of prayer. We want you to turn your Bibles with me to 1 John chapter 5. Yes, 1 John chapter 5. And we want to pick up from verse 13 through to verse 15. It reads in my Bible, and it should in yours. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that we may know that we have eternal life. Yes, eternal life. And that we may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we do have in him, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that if we ask anything, underline anything, according to his will, he will hear us. Verse 15 for now. And if we know that we, he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. Three potent verses that should revolutionize our prior walk, our prior life. And I want to slowly look at them as we establish another in the series of prayer. We are encouraged by the Apostle John is subject and object is prayer. We are in chapter five, and we have read from verse 13, 14, and 15. Listen to the context. He's talking about prayer, asking and receiving. Verse 14 says, and this is the confidence certainty, assurance that you and I as Christians have concerning prayer, that when we come to God in prayer, we are to come with every confidence, certainty, and assurance, no doubting no unbelief, no faithlessness. Where should our confidence be anchored? In this. We 
have in him the Lord Jesus Christ. That if we, you and I, I'm pointing at you, ask anything of the Father through Jesus Christ, using his name, in his name, the power of an attorney, a legal authority, we know. Now, slowly, anything means what? anything and everything. In prayer, many of us come and we ask. James says, if you have not, is because you ask not. And if you ask and you do not ask in faith believing, you will never get answers to prayer. But Jesus is teaching us now concerning prayer. Why is prayer considered a weapon? We refer to it as the weapon of prayer. Only one people in the earth has a weapon of prayer, the prayer weapon, because prayer itself is power, but we must utilize it right, confidently, with certainty, having every assurance. And here's how you structure your prayer. When you ask, ask God through Jesus in confidence, knowing this, that whatever, so put down the whatever, the scope of your prayer, the depth of your prayer. How far can you go? Just what can you ask? What are your entitlements? Because Jesus has gone ahead, paved the way, and made the way. A lot of us don't know this. We learn prayer religiously. Noise, shout, repetition. None of those get our prayers answered. As Jesus teaches, don't be like the Pharisees, hypocrites. When they do all the above, he said, don't copy them. Don't be repetitious. Don't be loud. Don't draw attention to yourself. But know this, and we have a song that informs us of this. It's a worship song. Father, we have confidence by the blood of Jesus Christ as we come into the place where you are, as we come into the place where you are, by the new and living way, Father, we come into the place where you are. The new and living way that this chorus speaks about is the way that is already sanctified and consecrated for us, you and I, by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's paved. It's paid. We have blessed assurance and every assurance. So what do we ask for? Everything and anything in the name of Jesus. Everything is granted in that name. And when we pray his word and ask according to his will, his word is his will and his will is his word. That's how we know what God's will is. It's in his word. And how do we know what God's word is? Is when we are praying by the spirit of God, his word. This verse alone, we can turn it upside down, inside out, outside in. But listen to it carefully. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. What things? He just dealt with a whole list of things about telling us our privileges, our rights, and all the appropriations through the blood of Jesus Christ, clearing the way. 
to the Father, that we may know that we have eternal life already, and that if we believe on the name of the Son of God, then here is what qualifies you. You believe on Jesus. We have eternal life. We believe on the name of the Son of God. Are all these settled in you? That's your identity. Then he says, move to the next level now in your prayer relationship, in your prayer association, because prayer is spiritual communication with God. Whatsoever, my God, it's so broad. It is so extensive, expansive. Whatsoever, when you come, come in confidence, boldness in full assurance, with all certainty. We're gonna to pray tonight. But when you come before your heavenly father, in the name of Jesus, you have a lethal potent weapon that gets the ears of God, the attention of God, that turns the hand of God, that causes all the power of creation, the God of creation, to be unleashed on you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You don't have to beg when you come to him in prayer. You don't have to borrow. You don't have to constantly repeat yourself. You put on a prayer shawl, invisible, but there is an anointing upon you. There's a readiness upon you. Things begin to move in the realm of manifestation. Not just asking, commanding, speaking. Put this word in your spiritual arsenal. Put this, these verses, particular 14. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, but it must be according to his will. This is the qualifier. And his will is his word, and his word is his will. Paul says, oh, that we might know what is that good and perfect will of God concerning us. It's in the word. For instance, Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, for I know the plans that I have concerning you. Put your name in there. Put your husband's name, your wife's name, your brother's name. Whoever is sick, whoever needs God, whoever needs a miracle, a breakthrough. For this is the purpose, the plan that I have concerning you. That plans to prosper you. Plans to bless you, plans to elevate you, to promote you. Therefore, go boldly every time you come before the throne of grace. And I love verse 15. And if we know that he hears us, because you know, it shouldn't even be an if, that he hears us. Whosoever, first of all, whatsoever in prayer, then whosoever, have you seen it? Whosoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions, the requests, the prayers already for which we desire. First John 5. How similar is First John 5 to Matthew, St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21 and verse 22? Prior people, listen up. And all things, and here we go again, everything, all things, including everything, barring none, and all things, whatsoever we shall ask in prayer. You haven't even asked them yet. You're in the thinking process. But whatsoever thing you shall ask, believe in an active ongoing process. Present continuous tense. 
believing you shall have. Believability. Believe and belief and your prayer. Look how it works. Faith. This is the development of faith. Whatsoever things you shall ask. Believe in that you have them. They are done, supplied, granted. I'm sure this study tonight is to take your prior life a step higher. And all of the challenges that we had to get on tonight, devil didn't want you to hear this and to know this and to activate this and to practice this, apply, assimilate, and appropriately appropriate this in your life, in your walk in your marriage, in your family. Too many Christians walk in in doubt of their own prayers. Pray loud, pray big, pray long. Nothing is wrong with all of that. But where's the confidence? Where's the certainty? Where's the desire? Where's the knowing? So let's look at Matthew. 21 again. Take it this time from verse 21. Matthew 21, 21. Jesus answered and said unto them, he's talking to his disciples, verily, certainly, most assuredly, I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also ye shall say unto this mountain, he's dealing with a fig tree and a mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and it shall be done. Now, Christians have all types of mountains, financial mountains, houses, cars, mortgages, bills, Death, challenges over sickness, hell, death, the grave. Jesus has given us some keys as principles. He had just passed with his disciples the day before a certain fig tree. Say with me, a certain fig tree. The expectation was that the fig tree that they had encountered the day before should have had figs on it fruit, but there was none. Jesus cursed the fig tree by speaking words deliberately. Word is, words are the creative force. And so the following day, they were passing by the same way they did the previous day. And they saw the same fig tree, but the fig tree was altered. It was now withered and dried up, dead. What words did Jesus spoke that instantly or in a 24 hour cycle caused that living fig tree to die an instant death that was noticeable by the time they were passing the following day? And they were standing in amazement. Verse 20 says, when his disciples saw it, they marveled, they wondered, and they murmured among themselves saying, how soon is the fig tree withered again? They were questioning, I wonder what happened in Jamaican terminology. It's like they didn't expect, Jesus don't use empty words. His words have creative power, creative force and Jesus words they are spirit and life and he tells us the same in St. John chapter 6 my words they are spirit and life if you believe in them you shall receive from them so they had this discussion and Jesus corrected them and says truly verily I say to you the same shall be your manner of life but here is the principle, and all things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, 
believing, you shall receive. Prayer has potency. Prayer, the reaches from earth to heaven. Prayer transcend all natural realm, enters into the spiritual and brings whatever is contained in the spiritual realm, where? Into the natural realm. If that is so, and you as believers have that potency, have that prior accuracy, why are so many of us living under, below, beneath our dignity, beneath, our ability, so much lack. Pastor, pray for me. Brother so-and-so, pray for me. And sometimes we can blow up people out of proportion to make them look so good rather than cultivating and developing a prayer life with Jesus Christ individually, personally. This is not the only verse. He's dealing with the Wherever, whoever, whenever, and whatever of prayer. I've never heard it put like that before. Whenever you ask. Wherever though deals with your reach, you have ballistic missile system from earth to heaven. And whenever, whatever time of the day or night, it's not limited. There's absolutely nothing that the devil can do against your prayers if you pray according to the word of God. Don't pray bad prayers over people. Don't put curses on people. It only ricochet back on you. Boomerang back on you. Let your heart be clean. Let your words be pure. Let your words be scriptures. God's will into the situation, over the situation. It's okay, but they're doing me this and they're doing me that. That's all right, relax. Do what God says. Take care of God's pattern and watch what he does in protection of you. And so whenever, whoever, wherever, whatever are the levels that we are dealing with tonight in prayer. Let me give you another verse to strengthen. 1 John 5, 13 through 15. It is 1 John 3, verses 9 through 20, 22. 1 John chapter 3, yes. Verses 19 and 23 says this. First John 9, 23, 19. Whereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Mm -hmm. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and know it all things. Not finish yet. Verse 21. Beloved, if your heart condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God. Here's that word again. Confidence, knowing, certainty, belief, without doubt. Verse 22 though. And whatsoever we ask, we, are, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Wow. That's how you pray God's will. When you pray God's word. That's how you know God's will. When you know God's word. But when you pray. The way God speaks. Your words become. A creative force. Your word become a launching rocket or pod. To release spiritual missiles in the enemy's territory and compound. Stop crying. Stop murmuring. Don't let him cut off your prayer source. Hmm? Lift up your prayers anew 
in faith believing, in confession, trust in God. You know why we're saying so? We have a vision for a ministry center of a hundred million dollars. We can have costs over for labor costs, material costs, all type of costs. And we want to build it in magnificent splendor and authority. How is it possible? By our prayers, through our words, asking in the name of Jesus, the way to the Father. We were touched because last week, a pastor from India contacted us, connected with us. Pastor Philippe from India watched the broadcast, listened to what was being ministered, connected to us. Don't take it lightly. We said we are love and faith world outreach. We're an outreach to the world. It means that being on these platforms, you don't know who is hearing, receiving, viewing, watching. It is such a powerful entity, a means of connecting through words and spiritual energy. He called. He first wrote. We responded. Then he called directly as far as India is from Jamaica. We can't measure the nautical miles. His request was help us first in prayer. Our people are experiencing a new outbreak of leprosy. Leprosy. We thought that that was something that the earth was rid of. We thought that that was forgotten in the times of Jesus. That there have been several types of medication and drugs to combat leprosy. But no, the skin breaks, cracks, sore under, stench, smell. People scorn you, reject you, walk on the opposite side. Remember the lep lepers in the Bible who took a city? All because they wouldn't take them in the city. They shut them out. But it's a present reality. The water holes that they drink from, stagnant. They step into it with their feet. Dirt, all types of things engaged upon. Then they drink the same water. They wash in it. They bathe in it. Same water. Not clean, nice running water that we turn on and waste from our tops, from our pipes. What goes into our toilets for flushing? Oh, it's cleaner than what they have to engage in, to drink, to bathe, to wash clothing, dishes. They go and bathe and wash the clothes and they fill their buckets and take it home. And it broke me in tears. It ought to do the same for you. That's one problem. They live at the foot of the mountains. No roof, no housing, no proper residence. But they are Christians. We have the photos. We have the short videos to show, to prove. We want to show them at church. Because when you tell people this, some people believe, dismisses it. A nine day wonder, oh, so sad, and we pray a little prayer. But can we join those people that are our brothers and sisters in India today, in the midst of a pandemic? But on top of it, housing problem, water problem, food problem, clothing problem. And they're just coming out of Hinduism and the worship of over 300 million gods. 
and they lack so much. We take for granted where God has taken us from and what he's doing in our lives. And some of our children, they stay home. They come to the house of the Lord when they feel like. We even get into that habit. I don't have to go today. Oh, after all that God has done for me, my soul cries out. Thank God for saving me. But it doesn't go further than that. We come to special events, New Year's service, watch night, some of us, Christmas, Easter. But the love of God, when you see these people worship, sit on the ground and sing. No benches, no chairs, no air conditioning. No nice stained glass windows. But the sincerity of their hearts, the passion of their soul. Newfound believers, and they are reaching out to us. You said you're a world outreach. They're saying, can you adopt us? Help us. Sow a seed. A hundred US dollars, if we were to send from our church, is like a hundred thousand to them in buying basic amenities, in meeting certain needs, in getting foods in the mouths of their babies, infants and children, mothers who breastfeed. Pastor Philippe from India must become a part of our prayer and praying process. As we meet the needs here, we must also include others that are more desperate than ourselves. And then from Nairobi, Kenya, another congregation. Will you partnership with us? Will you adopt us? And you might dismiss it and say, oh, them people, they're greedy and they're looking money. But no, our hearts must break. We must reach out to these people as one day somebody reached out to us. And they are all over the world. Cameroon. Not just African nation. Asian nation. India with 1.3 billion people. The world's second most populous nation. Other than China. China. 1.5 billion but many has never heard the name of god how far is your prayer reach is it only for when you don't have is it only to beg god is it only to lift up your shopping list we want to pause tonight and take the next few minutes and not get too comfortable with materialism, consumerism. Not get too comfortable with things, but take up the plight of the brokenhearted and the wounded. Listen again to this verse. And this is the confidence that we have in him, Jesus Christ. Are you confident? Is your confidence shaken? Is your faith waning? Are you unmoved by the circumstances of the day? We get into quarrel. Should we take the vaccine or not? Some people can't even spell vaccine. Their governments can provide it. Some African countries have not had 1% of their population vaccinated. So they're not worried over the choice of and get spiritual and religious over whether or not. They're just seeking day to day to get back. Spoke to Dr. Fred Mitchell, and he's just coming in from Burundi in Africa. Preach for six weeks. One of the things that he said amongst many that got me, they all shared communion from one big cup. 3,000 people in one service. 
20,000 in another, drinking from the same cup, no man. In a demi time, and nobody took sick. There was not an outbreak. They were not worried about COVID. Their minds were on other things, trying to stay alive. And others came and sip, and others came and sip, and they filled it, and others came and sip, and him said, and I sipped too. They said, Jesus, what a stretch of faith. And God kept them. No vaccine is there. No medical supplies. Pure liquid faith. But God kept them. Am I sending you to do that? I'm just saying, look what God is able to do in the midst of catastrophe, in the midst of disaster. And Christians in the Western world, oh God, we have more than six meals a day, three healthy meals a day. We eat leftover, scrape out. Our dogs have more than some of these living human beings. If these verses are true, and 1 John says, whatsoever you pray, 1 John 3, 19 through 22. And if Matthew 21, 22 says, whoever, whatsoever you ask, In Jesus' name, the potency, the power, the supply. That's why Maxfield is not an issue. God can change the hearts, the lives of men in the inner cities, of men in the highest palaces. God can provide resources, finances. In Haggai, he says, the gold and the silver are mine. I will come with my glory, pour out, go up to the mountain, gather wood, and build my sanctuary. It's not building only, is he talking about, but building lives. The coming of the Lord is nearer than we Believe is coming here and now. So I want to pause. I feel this burden. Shared it this morning in an early morning prayer meeting already. I felt impressed to share it with you. And I know love and faith's people, passionate, a people with a heart after God, a people that love beyond measure i want to ask you to lift up india and if god speaks something to your heart and you're listening to this broadcast you have heard these words and he has moved you to give even a dollar to help a soul to come to know him to help a little Christian baby to get milk in Pastor Philip's church, that we can send something to their account. And you know, God works in a marvelous way, not a mischievous way, but a mysterious way. It could be as we are putting something aside for them, that God impresses it upon somebody else's heart. To put something in our account to do bigger and greater in touching lives here in Jamaica, in a city up to. I ask you to join me at these closing stages of our Bible study tonight on prayer. You should have had whoever, wherever, whatever. Whenever you pray, pray with confidence. Bow your hearts with me. Bow your heads. Pray along with me. Come on, intercessors. Come on, prayer warriors. 
come on enlisted men and women. Let's lay down before the throne of God tonight. Angelic help, assistant is granted and given. Pray with me tonight. Dear Lord Jesus, come on pray. We lift up India, almighty God, the entire nation, 1.3 billion people. Break down their gods and idols, cows, ants, all types of animals. Break down the spirit of idolatry, adultery, ignorance, witchcraft, religiosity. We pray specifically today against those Indian idols, foreign gods, strange gods, and strange altars. And Lord Jesus Christ, raise up Jamaica to fulfill the destiny of the entire human race and to advance the welfare of every individual on the face of the earth. We pray without knowing personally, Pastor Philippe. We pray over his video. We pray over his congregation. Lord, they may be even listening tonight. You heard his plea. They are your children, sons and daughters. Oh God, India belongs to you. Preserve them, oh God, and give love and faith and inheritance in that nation. Hundreds of thousand people are coming to you daily. Help us to help them advance the kingdom of God in their midst. Save India today. Come on, pray with me tonight. Be touched with the feelings of the infirmities of others. Have strong confidence, hope and faith without doubting. But needs are being met tonight. Where we can't go, our prayer precedes us. Touch them. Lord, we pray for Kenya, Nairobi, and other parts. The Christian brethren are martyred, slaved, killed. We are, oh God, their bodies are burned and churches are burnt. Makeshift building, touch roofs, but they are meeting joyously. And are rejoicing in salvation and your healing power. In Burundi. Oh God, our brother just returned with a testimony. How you preserve the communion cup. Others would scorn because we fear catching disease from unwashed hands and unwashed mouths, from unwashed bodies. Touch us, Lord Jesus Christ, in this nation of Jamaica. We have a problem of murders and death, sometimes 14 a day, sometimes one ever so often in the course of a day, we must reach out to each other and show kindness for a more gentler and genteel society. In our Bible study tonight, raise up a prayer, oh God. Open your microphones with me right now. You may be a pastor, an elder, an evangelist, a believer. You may be from Love and Faith World Outreach or some other church. Open your mouths. Open those microphones. Begin to pray with us tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, saints, open those mouths. Lift up your voices. Oh God. Father, we have confidence through the blood of the Lamb. 
through the power of the Holy Ghost. We are going through what others are suffering far more than ourselves. Right here in our country, in other nations, in other Caribbean islands, volcanoes, storms, earthquakes, economic, financial, severe pain, Spirit of the living God. Yes, Lord God, hear the cries of desperation, of being destitute. Help us to teach our children to bow their knees, to kneel at the altar, to seek you, the Lord, as he may be found. Call ye upon him. With our brothers. To establish Jesus. our prayer altars. Come on, saints. God, help us. Kosanda. Come on, Nisha. Jesus. Come on, Judith Serdar. Help us, Lady Alba. We know Jesus. you. Come on, intercessor. Come help on, Lady Jesus. Harris. Come on, Ricardo Knight. Robo Come on. Hallelujah. Minister Cox. Come on, Minister Germain. Oh, we cry out the name of Jesus. Every life of my people that are called by my name would humble themselves. Come on, Lady Susan Johnson. On a thousand hill, Lord, Ratasana na kisolo, na 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 Lock of water, oh, clean God. water. Oh, to God. bathe, to drink, by the amenities, to wash. Jesus. Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. As we look towards Father's oh, Day Lord, coming up, men that are broken and shaken, but Spirit of God oh, here. God. Move God. like you have never moved before. Meet the, the needs of God for shelters, for home, for food, for clothing. My God, my God. In Africa. Uh, in Uganda. In Uganda. Wonder you are. Oh, Spirit of God. Yes, God. Meet Thank the you, needs. Jesus. Yes, Lord. In India, in China. Meet the needs those parts. Meet the needs Remember, Lord. oh God. Lord, we pray. Those who are less fortunate than Lord, ourselves. Yes, Lord. Lord. And wash. Come on, Janice. Come on, Janice. Robobonda Rababanda Ridios Pulverianda tonight, Lord. Spirit of we grace are hearing. and of mercy. So, Lord, we believe can give up their pull on without food. In the mighty name we of Jesus, we can sow something into in these the needs. In so doing, oh God, Jesus. meet a need. Jesus. Jesus. We can give us love and faith. Many times, Lord. Hallelujah. They are desperate. They are hungry. They are thirsty. They are lonely. They are afflicted. Even as we repent, we ask you, Lord. Break diseases. Break the curses. Break the rebellion. Break the divination. Suffer so not a witch to live among them. Yeah. Those who practice sorcery, Hallelujah. bring them down and break captivity Thank over you. your people. Yeah. Those bondages. Come on, nation. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The conquering lion of the tribe of Judah Lord, breaks break every chain. Every Give it us the victory every again and again. And again. Every chain. Oh, your coming is near. What do you require of us, O oh Lord? Mm. Hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. Thank you, Jesus. All in all the mighty men. Mighty men of battle. All in all the mighty men. The mighty men of war. It's war. Hallelujah. 
calling all the fathers hallelujah, hallelujah. to present ourselves in the house of the Lord and the Son. How at the altar? Yes. Honoring our men and our elders. Yes. Lifting up our voices and bending our knees. Hallelujah. And proclaiming the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Mm. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We thank you, Father. Yes, we thank you. We thank you. As we prepare to close tonight, may the Lord touch your hearts to give something. Love. Hope. Peace. Thank you, Jesus. We give you thanks. Give me a list of those that you would have. Some of those you have on your line, Tracy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. On Zoom, we have Lady oh, Suzanne. Yes, go ahead, Tracy. Go ahead. On Zoom, we have Lady Suzanne Johnson. We have yeah. Brother Lennon. We have Lady Janice. Lady Judith Sidar. Marlene Palmer Simpson, Lady Marlene Palmer Simpson, Lady Nisha, Lady Olga Ricardo Knight, and Lady Yvette Harrison. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. As Zoom, any, any, any Facebook, I'm sure. Yes. Too you numerous. Can we have some of those? Facebook, we have Lady Margarita, her coach and Joseph. Uh -huh. We have Lady Judith Paul. We have Patricia Emos, Maxine Sloan, Tony Riley, Pauline Davy, um, Sandra Bartley Osborne, Angela Kelly, Jade Sibley, Pastor Jennifer Owens, Persia De Costa. Sandra Dobson Smith, George Bailey, Nazarene Keith, Aliyah Wilson, Cordella Brown Coy, Marguerite Houghton Josie. Oh, I said that already. We have P. and Peter Gay Kelly, Pauline Harnum, Georgia Matthews, Josephine Pierre. Marjorie Daniels, Elder Marjorie Daniels, Alex Cameron. Hallelujah. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Welcome, Bishop. And the numbers are growing. Now listen to me carefully. Let's respond to a need. And Sunday we want to have what we call a salute to our fathers. The culture of honoring, honoring our men, young men, middle age, the elders, the oldest father, the youngest, the in between. Come with your sons, fathers. Fathers, come with your sons. Sons, come with your fathers. Let the girls celebrate their fathers and the sons celebrate their fathers. Get up, get up. Come, let's raise an altar before God. Cry out for our men in the church, outside. Let's disturb the heavenlies. Let's reach out for the homes that are broken. Wives that just get up and walk away from home. Husbands that just leave the children in reckless abandonment. Fatherlessness, lack of care, lack of love, provision, protection. Abandon their responsibility towards their family to love, to care, to prepare, to provide, to protect. Hallelujah. And so we want to make that a special Sunday, not a special Sunday to stay home and cook. Do that if you must, but not on God's time. Come out and celebrate our families. Take back some marriages, take back some homes, some families. In the name of Jesus. It was a joy sharing with you tonight. Go over these scriptures. Look at the scope, the length, the breadth of your prayers. And the fact that Satan cannot turn back or stop 
your prayers. Surgical accuracy. Pinpoint accuracy. Missile strategic accuracy. May the Lord bless you. Raise your hands with us tonight. For the benediction. Hallelujah. The Lord God bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord raise up the light of his countenance upon you. And the Lord grant you his shalom. Shalom men, shalom brothers, shalom sisters. Shalom bishop. And I'm looking forward to see the men, especially in the house of the Lord. As there's something special awaiting you on Sunday. The Lord bless you and we love you, Jennifer and I, with the love of the Lord. Bless you, Great my bishop. And the peace of the bless Lord. You, bishop. God bless you. Bless you Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Good Thank night. you. Night, night. Good night. Good night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.